witness to Yoshi Tutsugo and everything that he brings. And even after watching him spark a big rally last night at PNC Park, I, I don't know. I don't know. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Penguins right where you found this. The Pirates had another, emphasizing another, big rally for a victory coming back from four runs down to beat the Diamondbacks 6-5. to five at the yard last night I was over there and as boring as the first few innings were and monotonous and eternal with Will Crow pitching and all the time he takes between pitches what a tooth pull that is but to see the team come back again for the fifth time this season from four plus runs down Remarkably, there's only three other teams in baseball who have more. I know, right? Crazy stuff. Well, it was Tutsugo who who got it going. He was the one that scorched the ball over the Clemente wall to get the Pirates back within 5-2. to two. And after that, they started nicking away a little bit. Brian Reynolds came up. Got a big RBI triple. And then with bases loaded, Kibrian Hayes worked a 10-pitch at bat to get a high bouncer up the middle that was enough to score what became the winning run to David Bednar with the save, all that other stuff. Happy, happy, everybody's high-fiving, jumping, doing that thing they do in the outfield and whatever else. But what about Tsutsugo? What is that? What is that? Why is he here? That is the first question that I had upon his acquisition. He's already been with two other teams this year, the Dodgers and the Rays, both of whom have reputations, and deservedly so, for excelling in player development and instruction. And they both had him, and even though he'd been highly successful in Japan, it wasn't translating here at all. So they had to let him go. Now, they're also in different boats than the Pirates are because both the Dodgers and the Rays, of course, are first place teams. So they can't just drag along somebody chewing up a roster spot all summer long, and they certainly can't do it in the stretch and into the playoffs. So neither of them was going to put up with a whole lot. And they were going to risk losing this player. And they did. And the Pirates picked him up. And he's 29 years old. And you can say to yourself, this makes no sense. This doesn't fit in with any kind of build or rebuild or whatever else you want to call it. But then you see that power. And I watched him yesterday at field level taking batting practice. And it's not phony. Ball just screams off his bat. It's something. Uh, Reminds me a lot in a way, and I'm not just saying this because he also came from that part of the world, but it reminds me in a way of Jung Ho Gong. Jung Ho had uh, explosive liftoff, reverberation off the bat. And and that's what Tsutsugo's swings and contact sound like. Now, he deserved being cut by the Dodgers and Rays. He didn't do much of anything. His season average right now, his batting average, is 182 with three home runs. Since he's been with the Pirates, and it's only been a week and change, He's 6 for 18 with three home runs and two doubles. So this is where you you get really uneasy. 
for the obvious reason that it's a small sample size, but also that it's, you know, he was just with two teams that really, really know what they're doing. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by the North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. The family and I stopped in there ourselves before the game last night and had just outstanding sandwiches. I know that whenever you hear Tavern, and, and of course the place next to it is also part of the same venture, Mike's Beer Bar, you think just, you know, you know, alcohol, and you think bar and whatever else. And this food that they are making and serving there is out of this world. North Shore Tavern, directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. Just go check them out. You'll be really, really glad you did. And you're actually going to want to get in touch with me to share that you did. Because I keep hearing from a lot of people who've gone there and like, wow, you weren't kidding. Now, the catch with Tsutsugo is that, well, he can't catch. Um, he's not a good fielder. The Pirates have now used him in the outfield and at first base, and neither of those went well, which only adds to the, you know, whole nonsensical whatever component to all of this. If there were some really strong sentiment toward bringing the DH to the National League next season, you could make an argument that maybe Ben Charrington is kind of seeing into his crystal ball and saying, hey, here's my DH. So I don't currently have one of those. I guess maybe you could have Colin Moran profile in that role, but you don't really have someone who would just step up and be a bopper. You don't there's a, always a lot of misnomers, usually in National League cities like ours, that you make someone a DH just because they're terrible defensively. What you actually want from your DH is to hit more than anything else. I don't know that they should be the best hitter in your lineup, but they should definitely be top three. And if they come with pop, so much the better. So maybe, maybe that's what this is about. Maybe it's getting a player, quote unquote, fixing him and eventually trading him for assets to a team, maybe one in the American League that can use him if there isn't a DH next year. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's just, you know, we saw this asset floating out there and we thought, We'd give him a chance. Well, he's he's taking it. He's taking it. This dude is hitting some rockets. And it's at least adding a little bit of, uh, of intrigue to the final month or so of this season. When we come back, just one question. It's time for just one question, and today's comes from Mark, who asks, I realize that this was an insignificant win, but what is significant to this Pirates fan is that the effort never stopped. If Derek Shelton has the Pirates playing hard now, what might he do with a contending team? It could be exciting. Mark, I asked... Shelton, after the game, well, here, I'll just play it for you. Guys in new roles, Shelton, you've also talked about uh, challenging, challenging them to, to step up within those. You've talked about opportunity. Um, how hard has it been? How, how tough has it been for you to, to get everybody together? Because you have played winning baseball lately. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you put guys into new roles, it, it can be challenging because they're learning that. And, and I think to your point, DK, sometimes with opportunity, you know, you have to take a step forward or step, take a step back. And, you know, that's what we have over these last 40 games or whatever it is, is a challenge for these guys to do it. And, uh, you know, it, it's good to see them step into that. 
It can't be easy, man. This is 57 players that the Pirates have gone through now. This season alone, that's a franchise record. The previous was 55. The 57th was Michael Chavis, who was called up yesterday from Indianapolis. I already mentioned Sasugo, and that's just from the past week. There's Anthony Bonda out there uh, murdering guys in the eighth inning with a 1-2-3 strikeout the side. The lefty they just picked up. So this is kind of what you're going to be seeing here the rest of the way. They're throwing a lot of different stuff against the wall and seeing what works. But the manager's challenge, as you heard me ask him there, within that is to somehow keep them together, keep them focused on winning, which is their priority for you cynics out there, and to, you know, remember their names, I guess. (laughs) Honestly, yesterday I was there, I, I mentioned not just covering the game, but down on the field for BP. And I can't remember the last time so many different players wearing a Pittsburgh uniform walked either past me or near me, and I had no idea who they were. Like, I can tell you this. I can't tell them that. Like, like imagine stopping him and saying, hey, excuse me, who are you anyway, right? That's kind of how it felt. And that's part of what, what he has to do here, and part of what's impressive. Uh, it is. There's there's two things that I've given Shelton a lot of credit for in 2021. One of them is the improved defense and fundamentals, which you saw on display in a big way last night with Kevin Newman's excellent work at shortstop. Three outstanding plays. Two of them were just like even a notch above the third one. And the team overall ranks sixth in the majors in fielding percentage, which is not something that you associate, generally speaking, with a team that's on a hard, hard course for 100 losses. Something good is happening within all the bad for your team to be sixth in fielding percentage and have the fewest errors in the National League since May 9th. And most important, it's guys who matter. It's Brian Reynolds, Brian Hayes, Newman you could make an argument for. Jacob Stallings isn't going anywhere. This is the best defensive catcher in baseball. So I give Shelton credit for that. I also give him credit for, for this, for them battling these games. What was the term you used here? Insignificant. Yeah, this was insignificant. The Pirates beating a team with a very similar record at the end of August (laughs) is about as insignificant as it gets. But they didn't treat it that way. Now you can say on one hand, well, of course they're playing hard. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're terrible individual players and they need to uh, do well and compete just to keep their jobs and to stay in the majors because no other team would have them. And to an extent, some of that's true. To an extent. But you still have to keep them focused on that. And when I heard Kibrian Hayes say after the game, he was talking about Newman's defense, the way he summed up his comments was to say, and it helped us get the W. That was the last thing out of his mouth. And that 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 kind of resonated with me. You know, he's he's a child in this process. He's going to be part of this process moving forward for a long time. And he's talking about a W at the end of August against the Diamondbacks with the same record? You know, that's that's when your manager or coach, depending on the sport, is making an impact, when the players are kind of echoing what it is that he's bringing up. So I, I definitely give Shelton high marks on that. As far as getting into what he's going to be like when they're contending and stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people think about that. Uh, I'm not ready to have that discussion. That That's a just a different cat for me. It really is. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. Let's do it again tomorrow. Mm-hmm.